Welcome to another episode of Twist by Tiga Tactics. I have the unique opportunity and pleasure and honor to interview Guru Dr. Sensei Scott Sobel, amazing martial artist. Super lucky to have him on this episode. Guru Scott? Sensei Scott? Sobel Sensei? Gosh, I'm so confused. Uh, uh, what got you into martial arts? I'm of that age group. That we all have the same answer. It was Bruce Lee movies, of course, and uh, some Kung Fu theater on Sunday afternoons. Of course. Uh, was, as a child, spent most of my afternoons jumping around, kind of copying the movements, uh, making nunchucks out of broomsticks, and uh, <laughs> all, course, all, the standard, yes, yes. all the standard stuff. Awesome. <laughs> um, and when I was 13, or turning 13, one of my parents' friends gave me three introductory lessons to a local Ed Parker's Kempo Karate School, and it took, and I've uh, been a martial artist ever since. Uh, what, what styles and arts uh, have you studied and, and what are you teaching currently? Uh, I started in Kempo, from there, Taekwondo, Aikido, uh, Panchak Silat, uh, Jiu Jitsu. I've gotten to dabble in some other arts and cross trained with some very talented other instructors that uh, have had the great opportunity of learning from. I know you have a school in Maryland, and what, what do you teach there? Uh, there we have uh, Panchak Silat, uh, Aikido, and we have a Jiu Jitsu MMA program. For your students, for your friends, your family, what, what recommendations do you have for them uh, for self-defense, for personal protection out there? Uh, the biggest recommendation I make is awareness. The best self-defense is not being in a situation where you have to use self-defense. Um, it's pretty standard across the industry. Um, but then from there, practical stuff, stuff that works for you. Um, every person has different physical attributes, size, strength, endurance, flexibility. So you really have to find an art that works for you. So I'm a big fan of the practical. I found, you know, tremendous, I'm certainly a bias, um, a lot of practical use in the lot. Also the Aikido because it doesn't rely on strength. Arts that you can use as you get older and um, the Taekwondo, great art, um, but I couldn't see myself at 90 jumping up, kicking somebody in the head. Um, you know, my, my head kicks weren't that good when I was young. <laughs> I don't see them getting better as I get older. So, you know, you want something I think that has some longevity to it as well. And I know you've uh, been a bar bouncer in the past, and um, you've probably been thrown out of bars as well. <laughs> <laughs> been on both ends. <laughs> what what what, um, what advantages does training martial arts have uh, in in an actual street fight? Um, I think the the main thing is the presence of mind that you know you have a skill set, so it allows you to de-escalate. You can let things get a lot further and not have to switch into a life or death mode right away. I'm very comfortable knowing that I can get closer, I can deal with things, knowing that you can deal with the strike, knowing that you can deal with the grappling, allows you to be a nicer person, which gives you a chance to not have to use the, the skills that you have. Um, I think that's one of the problems you run into, we see with law enforcement, um, where they don't get a lot of training and it's an on-off switch. There's no, no volume control. So it's from nothing to 100. Mm. And if that's your only option and you have to go into life or death mode, you're either hesitant, so you're going to be in trouble, or you're using too much force and you're going to be in trouble. So training gives you the options of being calm. And you can see a little bit more, a little more options. A any recommendations for what people should carry out there for personal protection? Uh, there was a great movie and there was an old gunfighter. He said, you know, I'm not as fast as I used to be, but I cheat real good. And he opened up his jacket and he had guns, knives, and all this other stuff. <laughs> so I'm a, I'm a huge fan of stacking the deck to your advantage. Um, but different states have different laws. Uh, in Maryland, you can get a concealed carry permit, but it's very hard. And if you use firearm, there's a lot of repercussions. Blades, depending on your state, you know, again, different states, different laws. Um, I'm a huge fan of having all your options available and being proficient in everything you carry. Um, I'm a fan of firearms, I'm a fan of certainly knives, but a lot of your non-lethal and impact weapons are great too. Things that don't require a whole lot of training, you know, the, the, flat, the flashlights are great as an impact weapon and, you know, something to blind. Pepper sprays, the right circumstance, you know, if you live in Colorado and it's windy, mm. less effective. <laughs> um, yes. And so, you know, just again, just whatever you're going to carry, I'm a big stack of that, carry whatever you can carry, but be trained in what you carry. That's that's the, the biggest thing. And I like how you mentioned the laws, you know, some people carry and uh, yes. especially knives. Yes. You know, you could buy one off Amazon. It might be too big for your, 
your the state where you're living, or, or you might not be able to conceal it. Uh, those kind of issues there. Uh, so Guru Scott, Sensei Sobel, thank you very much for uh, uh, helping us with our interview here. Thank you very uh, much. Please uh, check out tigatactics.com. There's going to be more information on uh, Guru Scott here. And uh, keep tuning in. Thanks for watching. If you like that video, smash that thumbs up. Please subscribe. That's right. And comment below. Like it, hate it, have any questions. We'll get right back to you.